A brand new life. One thing I've learned about life is pretty much the same wherever you go. May as well stay close to your friends, your family, work things out. But I reckon you've had enough folks telling you how to run your life. I'm not going to add to the list. You take care of Tina Roberts. And Al, if your mama needs anything, you tell her, give a holler to Cross Creek Ranch. Thank you. But don't worry. Really, we'll be fine. Who am I kidding, huh, Al? that you'd have the best of everything here in America. So what have I given you? I can't even say I brought you to your father's house because Cord is not your father. Oh, well, I've taken you from your real parents and what have I given you in return? Nothing but a dusty old house with a little old memory. Life is with you. Now, come on, didn't last night convince you of that? Yeah. I guess I could just use a little more convincing. Don't know your own strength, huh? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just not feeling like Hercules right now. Tony, through all of this, you've been thinking about everybody else, about Tina, the baby, and me. But you haven't once worried about yourself. I just don't let you see it, that's all. But what I do see is a woman who wanted a beautiful wedding and a storybook ending. Honey, believe me, we are going to have our happily ever after, all right? It's, it's just going to be a little postponed, that's all. Hello? Kate, hi, it's Rafe. Hi, Rafe. Uh, have you heard any word about Tina? Yeah, I think we got our first break. Tell Cord that we may know where Tina is. you eat every little shred of this check. $22. Oh, don't look surprised. I saw your signature on the bottom of the check. I know an insult when I see one. Take it easy. It's probably just a mistake. A mistake? The only mistake I ever made was working for a louse like you. Oh, I knew you were macho and pig-headed, but I never knew you were cheap. It's probably a bookkeeping error. And when Marcy comes back, she'll cut you another check. Hi, John. Did you enjoy your lunch? Uh, yes. Hi, Marcy. Uh, I got a few questions for you. Oh, I'll just put these files away. I have been sorting through a stack this high down in the incinerator. These are the only files that survived the review. Uh, listen, forget the files for just a minute. How was a check cut to Cassie for a fraction of the right amount? I wouldn't know. Well, if you wouldn't know, who would? Well, it's obvious you've got your hands filled with problems, so I'll just make myself... No, it's no problem, Cassie. I'm sure that Marcy can explain a simple little bookkeeping error, right, Marcy? Oh, well, John, I don't make bookkeeping errors. I put everything on the computer. Now, if there's a problem, it's, it's software, not me. If you're a software computer, what are you talking what about? What did I tell you? Well, I got this opportunity to move into the 20th century, so I leaked some new equipment. I, I didn't approve that. I am sure. As soon as you see how efficient it makes everything, you'll be glad I took the initiative. Initiative, that's something you've always admired, John. All right. Let's just forget bookkeeping for the time being. How about Mr. Hawkins' phone call? Hawkins? Hawkins. Yeah, 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 Hawkins. He was supposed to call me when he's ready for me to go into action. Oh, him. I told him you were unavailable. You did what? Well, I figured your lunch would run over. And once you came back, you'd want to reorganize the office. Mm. Oh, we have got so many details to iron out. No, Marcy, you iron them out. i got to get a hold of Hawkins. Another problem, John? Oh, no, no problem. I'm just looking for my phone numbers. That beat up old thing? I threw it out. Come again? So I put everything on the computer and threw the old stuff away with the file. Let me get this straight, Marcy. I don't have any files anymore. And I don't have any phone numbers either. They're all stored on the hard disk. You can call them up in seconds. I'm going to call them up in seconds. 
seconds when I don't even know how to turn that damn machine on. Don't lose your temper. I'm not losing my temper. I'm not losing my temper. Okay? I just want my files back and my phone numbers and my old disorganized office. Is that understood? Hey guys, what's the matter? There's a great game going on over there. Why don't you two go join in? I told you, Kev, she won't talk about it either. Talk about what? Aunt Tina. See Joe whispers to play entrepreneur with her. We don't know where she is. Oh, Kevin, your Aunt Tina had to go out of town suddenly. Someone said that she ran away. Is that true, Marilyn? Honey, your mom and dad don't want you to worry about your Aunt Tina. I'm sure she'll be coming home again very soon. And when she gets home, you'll have lots of time to play games with her. You could tell us. She's in trouble, isn't she? Kevin, sometimes grown-ups have to go away for a while to work out their problems. But they usually find out that going away doesn't help. And then they return to the ones who love them. And that's when... Hello. Can I help you? Marilyn Dennison. You're a friend of Cassie's, right? I remember her waving to you to running in this morning. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> My name's Lee Halpern. Uh, I was walking by the park and I saw you and I thought I'd come up and introduce myself. I'm glad you did. Now, you two major leaguers will go join the game. You sure and Tina's going to be all right? I've crossed my heart. Now go hit a home run for me. Better yet, hit two. Okay. Okay, Bye. Josh. Bye. <laughs> well, you certainly handled them well. Well, I've had a lot of practice. Well, for someone so young, you certainly know a lot about children. Well, that's more than I can say. So, uh... Do you babysit full time? No, I'm I'm in college. Oh no, you see that is another thing you have on me. I'm I guess what you call a self-made woman. Well, my father started out selling newspapers, and then he worked his way up to uh, editor in chief of the newspaper in El Paso. Now he's news director at WVLE. Oh, what a remarkable man! Did you work a lot of jobs before you were able to form your own company? Well, uh, I I paid my dues. <laughs> Did you just wake up one day and say, I want to be my own boss? No, no, no. But I guess it was. I'm always sort of in the back of my mind, you know. So how do you like Landview? So far? Well, so far I find it, um, fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> you mean it's very quiet compared to New York. <laughs> well, it's a little slower, but I find the people here seem to care about each other a lot. Well, I bet you have a lot of friends, huh? Well, I had a lot of friends in El Paso. But here, uh, I have to learn to trust people. And that's been very hard for me. Do you know I am exactly the same way? Really? Yes, yes, I am. Now I know that I sort of popped in here and struck up a conversation with you, but that's unusual for me. Maybe it's because I sense that you and I could talk to each other. Do you want to hear something odd? Huh. From the moment you sat down, I sensed the very same thing. It's only software. Once you get the hang of it, you'll get down on your knees and thank me. Hey, well, where are you going now? Now, that's another thing. You have got to learn to delegate authority. Now, I've got something to take care of, and I'll be right back. Hey, well, hold on a minute here. Hey, who's the boss around here? Now, wait just a... Marcy! What are you grinning for? I'm happy for you, that's all. You finally got what you wanted. Professionalism minus the emotional commitment, emotional attachment. She just used to the corporate setup, that's all. Once I loosen her up a little bit, get her to do things my way, then she'll get the office back in shape and back on track, and I'll get my life in order. I'm sure you're going to get everything you so richly deserve. Now, may I please have my severance pay in cash? that do or you want it in singles too no this is fine thanks here we go time to do your homework what is that the latest in accounting software 
By the time I'm finished with you, you and your operation will be one highly efficient integrated system. Won't that be wonderful? Well, thanks for trying. Right. Oh, don't tell me the State Department struck out. My friend Donald cross-checked every United States passport leaving this country in the last 24 hours, and Tina Roberts is not among them. That proves it. This is not one of her ploys. She really doesn't want to be found. Which means that Kate and Cord are going to be living in a sort of limbo until she is. I know you want to help them very badly, but there is nothing that you can do. It couldn't have come at a worse time. Not only this on my mind, but I have a visitor coming. A very important, very demanding visitor. I know I can't ask the details, but, oh, I would love to hear them. No, no, it's, it's not a top secret. The Crown Prince of Mendora is arriving here shortly for a state visit. Since I am still the official ambassador to his country, I am expected to escort him wherever he goes. Sounds like a great honor. Well, it's also a chore. How am I going to split up my time between trying to help Kate and Cord and play protocol games with a crown prince. That does sound hard, doesn't it? But I, I, I am well known for coming up with simple solutions to complicated questions. Dorian, if you can come up with a simple solution to this one, I will be in your debt forever. Careful, and I hold you to that. My solution is this. You go ahead and try and find Tina. Leave the crown prince to me. Someone matching Tina's description was seen boarding a flight to Denver. She was carrying a baby. Now, the flight is going to be making a couple of stops. Uh, let's see, Dallas, Fort Worth, then El Paso, then I'll... El Paso, that's got to be it. Why would she go there? That's your hometown. Kate, you got to learn to think like Tina. Uh, she wants to go to the place where we first met, where we fell in love. Rafe, I'm telling you, if she's looking for a place to remember happier times, this is it. Yeah, El Paso's not a small town, though, Cord. And if we concentrate our search there, where are we going to start? Your family farm was, was sold. No, no, it was on the market, but the deal didn't go through. I... Tina knows that. She knows that the house is empty. Could you please call the police down there and get them to check it out as soon as possible? Boy, you were hungry, weren't you? Oh, well, you sleep all you want, honey. Well, I wish you a sweet dream. You won first place. You got it. Our little Betsy, the meanest mare in El Paso. I finally did it, Pa. Oh, congratulations. Oh, you should have been there, man. It was incredible. The other guys, they couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. You know how many times that she's thrown me? Oh, I know. 200 times. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey. Hey, Court, I almost forgot. We've got a visitor here. Hi. How you doing? Hey, when you came down here, you had no idea that you were going to meet up with the likes of me. No. No, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> but my business is through here. I, there's no reason for me to stay. I can think of a reason. You have got plenty of time to find this right man who's going to give you the world. But you can just let the world wait, say, for one afternoon. What do you say? Rafe, the El Paso police will do everything they can to try and find her. It never should have gone this far, Kate. I should have been more finely attuned to her feelings. You were feeling things too, remember? How in the world were you supposed to be prepared for her walking into that chapel with your baby in her arms? Yeah, but once I got over the shock, I should have been able to see how desperate she was. Well, I guess if you're to blame, then you might as well share a little of it with me. Oh, Kate, come on. This isn't your fault. Well, if marrying me put Tina over the edge, then I'm just as responsible as you are. You know, it's starting to sound like you thought it was not a good idea for us to get married. No, don't you see? That's the way you're sounding. 
I love you, and I'm not sorry that I fell in love with you, and I'm certainly not sorry that we chose to get married. Neither am I, Kate. But don't you see? It's like, like history is trying to repeat itself here. You mean because of what happened to you? Yes. Kate, I, I, I just can't shake the feeling that maybe my son is, is going to be brought up without knowing who his real father is. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't believe that history or fate or whatever is at work here is that cruel. And I'm sure that you had nothing to do with what Tina has done. Tina is gone. And little Al is gone, too, Kate. Now, if she gets sick, she's not going to be able to take care of herself or that baby. And who knows what's going to happen. Boy, stop it. You have got to have faith that you're going to find your son. You can't stop believing that. Charles, let me escort the crown prince. Really, I want very much to do something for you and your family. And oh. this way I can take a burden off of your shoulders. I really am quite expert at wine and dining, VIPs. Though I never have taken on a crown prince, I think I'm up to the challenge. Oh, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you would be able to charm the crown right off the crown prince. But Dorian, <laughs> I, I don't think so. You don't know how, how guarded and suspicious the royal family can be to outsiders. It's taken me years to earn their trust, particularly that of the prince. I promise you, I will not interfere in any way with the affairs of state the two of you need to discuss. But when it comes to ribbon cutting and champagne receptions, really, I think I'd be a very good substitute. Would you be honest with me for a second? This oh. isn't just to give me time to help Kate and Cord, is it? What other reasons would I have? Come on. All right, I do have my own reasons. Mm -hmm. The last few weeks I've had a hard time forgetting about Kathy and John. Even the prison reform board has not managed to distract me. And you think a crown prince might just do the trick for you? Let's put it this way. You'd be doing me a favor, I'd be doing you a favor, and what could be more fair than that? I just am fresh out of arguments. Oh, I can't thank you enough. Oh, don't thank me yet. You're going to have your hands full. Believe me, Charles, you won't be sorry. Mr. Hawkins, I, I, I apologize for the misunderstanding. It, I know we have the perfect plan set up to trap your vice president with his hands in the company till, and I know it'll work. What do you mean, forget it? Mr. Hawkins, I'm sure we can work this out if you'll just give me another... Ch oh. Short fuse, huh? He's not the only one. Oh, once we get this office in line, you'll have to fight off the clients. So come over here and let me show you how to set up our system. So now it's our system. Now, say you want to call up a client's account. All you've got to do is push this button. I don't push buttons. I hate buttons. This is a private detective agency, you know, not the Starship Enterprise. Oh, what in temper? No wonder you can't keep your clients. I didn't lose, Mr. Hawkins. You did. And I tell you what, if he can fire me, I guess I can return the favor then. Oh, well, John, if I didn't know that, I, I, I'd say you were firing me. What? Why, why? That's exactly what I'm doing. That's the thanks, I guess. After trying so hard to, to modernize this, this, this pretty hysterical office of yours? Don't give me those six-syllable words, please. Now, why don't you just grab your floppies and get out of my office? My what? Your desk, lady. With pleasure. And I thought I was doing you a favor. Just, uh, how do you think you will uh, find someone to replace me on such short notice? easy, sweetheart. I'll go where I should have gone in the first place. Now, come on, come on, come on, move it. <laughs> now, you see, that is another thing we have in common. We both came to Landview for a visit, and we ended up making it a home. Well, it hasn't always felt like home. I was ready to pack up and move back to El Paso, but my father, well... Mm, your father had other reasons for staying? He thought he did. Mm. That things didn't work out the way he hoped. Would I be wrong if I guessed there was a woman involved? Oh, no, Mary Lynn, I, I'm sorry. Don't, you don't have to betray any, any secrets. I guess it's just that uh, I have an interest in finding out how people settle in a town and, and make it their own. Well, in our case, it happened gradually. Even after my father's plans didn't work out. We still didn't want to leave Landview. I mean, he had his new job at WVLE, and I had a... You had a boyfriend. I'm rather transparent, <laughs> aren't I? No, no, not at all. Well, 
I guess that's a pretty good reason for finding a home, huh? No, but... Uh, don't forget to look for other exciting opportunities in your life. You know, I can tell from just talking to you now that you are bright and articulate and... Thank you. Now I'm telling the truth. You're the kind of young woman that can find anything in her life. You don't know how lucky you are. Do you really think I have that kind of potential? Oh, no, it is my job to find potential. Now, and if you refuse to settle for anything but the best in any part of your life, you can be... Uh, you can be one of the wonders of the world. <laughs> Nobody has ever said that to me before. <laughs> well, then you're not talking to the right people. Maybe you're right. Now, enough about me. I'd like to know more about you. Oh, well, there's really not that much to tell. You we have a lot in common. Where are you from originally? I mean, before New York. I did it. I did it. You two make a terrific combination. Well, you certainly do. Well, I better go now. You can settle up your box scores, huh? Oh, do you have to leave now? Well, I have to get back to work, but I'm sure we'll run into each other again. Hey, you guys, congratulations on your hit. Thanks. Uh, and Mary Lynn, it was, uh, it's really nice meeting you. It was nice meeting you, too. Well, we come here a lot. Maybe next time. Cassie, uh, no games. We both know my office has been in chaos since you left. I'm sorry, are you talking to me? All right, you want to torture me, I deserve it. But ever since you left, my office hasn't run smoothly. I don't know what's what or who's who. Well, Marcy seemed to be pretty smooth to me. Uh, don't even mention her name to me. That woman isn't smooth. She's robotic. You ask her for a cup of coffee, she gives you a slideshow on how they grow the damn bean. I need a gal Friday, not a microchip. Even if that's true, I fail to see where I fit in. Do I have to spell it out for you? I think we make a great team. That's funny. A couple weeks ago, you said it was impossible for us to work together. Something about personal feelings getting in the way of professional goals. I know, but all right. I know that now. You can keep your personal feelings out of it. So what do you say? I say you're all wet, Mr. Russell, because I don't want to keep my personal feelings out of my work. So if all you want me for is my phone voice and my typing skills, you can take your job and you know the rest. I didn't come for you, Tina. I came for the baby. But we both need you. You don't need anyone, Tina. You only use people. Even in, in an innocent little baby like Al. That's not true. I love this baby. I would never do anything to hurt him. You would in two minutes, Tina, if you got what you wanted out of it. No, no, no. That was the old Tina, but I've changed. I'm different now. Yeah, I've heard that tune a couple times, haven't I? And every single time, you've proved to be a liar. No, Cord, no, it's true. Oh, Cord, honey, I love you so much. I do. That's why when you turned your back on me, I, I couldn't stay and land you another minute. You only love yourself, Tina, and I've had to learn that the hard way. I will never trust you or believe you again. Oh, no, please don't say that. Oh, come on, Tina. You can save your tears. I'm immune to them now. And I will never, ever let you raise any son of mine. Come on, honey. Why don't you go home with Daddy, all right? Yeah. Daddy will take care of you.
of my swallowing my pride at least count for something? Maybe two, three minutes of discussion. I don't even think we could fill up the conversation with two minutes, but if you'd like to try, you might have it. Okay. About the work situation. I do need you for more than your typing skills and your telephone voice. I need you to get my files out of that damn computer and back into my file drawers. And if we realize our professional goals, well, what's the harm in having some personal feelings along the way? You make it sound so simple. Well, why does it have to be complicated? Because you're the one that showed me there are more than two people involved. But Cassie, the last thing I want is to come between you and your mother. But I, I've thought about it. I just can't spare her feelings to make both of us miserable. John, I'm not talking about sparing anybody's feelings. I am talking about being honest and open. You with me, me with you, and both of us with Mom. Well, I can't promise I'll change overnight, but... I will try to be more open and forthcoming with my feelings. And I'll celebrate Gal Friday's Day and Secretary's Day and all those other little observances. And if you get my phone numbers out of that computer and into my hands where I can hold them, I'll give you Friday afternoons off for a whole month. Of course, you'll have to work Saturday morning. <laughs> you make the job sound irresistible. Is that a yes? It's a qualified yes. What's the catch? I think we've conducted enough business for today. We have a deal. Where did you learn to play hardball? I learned from an expert. What's the deal? I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. Thanks, Cass. Now, if I can just talk Mr. Hawkins into giving the John Russell Agency another chance, but you're the greatest. You were sensational, Cassie. Me? You were great. You deserve an Oscar. Well, I'll tell, settle for something a little more negotiable. Ah. For services rendered. Oh, I almost hate taking your money. I've never had so much fun. Well, with any luck, Marcy, the fun is just beginning. The El Paso police checked it out. They didn't enter the house, but they looked through the window and they said there wasn't any sign of Tina and the baby. Well, maybe they didn't get off in El Paso. Maybe they went on to Denver. Well, there are a hundred other possibilities also. Look, we put an APB out on her. There's not much else we can do, Cor. Oh, come on, Rafe. That's just not good enough. You can do more than that. Cor, take it easy. Rafe is doing all he can. It's not his fault they slipped away. She's right. I I'm sorry, Rafe. That was out of line. Oh, forget it. I wish I had better news, but for now, it's we're back to square one. Well, have the El Paso police just given up? No, they're going to follow up on it. Now, Cor, believe me, if we hear anything, you're going to be the first to know. Thanks. Hey, look, Rafe, if I haven't said it all... You don't have to. We're going to find him, Cord. You have my word on that. She is down there at that ranch, Kate. I know it. You heard Rafe. The El Paso police are no, looking for I, her. I don't care what he said. I can't just sit here and do nothing about it. Cord, Rafe will find her. I'm going down to El Paso, Kate. I know that city like the back of my hand. If Tina and the baby are down there, I know I will be able to find them. You gotta understand, Kate. With this malaria thing, Tina's getting sicker by the minute now, and I gotta find her, and I gotta look after them before she, they get hurt. I do understand, but, um... El Paso's a big city. I think you're gonna need another pair of eyes. Honey, I love you for wanting to go along. But this time, you just can't. Oh, come on. Don't you remember what a great team we are? Yes. I do. But Tina saw us together. And that's one of the reasons she got so desperate that she felt she had to run away, remember? And you're afraid she'll spot us there. Yes, and I can't take a chance. Not now, not when the baby's life is at stake, okay? I'm afraid this one adventure, I'm gonna have to take care of my own. Well, you're wrong about one thing. I may not be with you in El Paso. But I'll still be there in your heart. I'm going to find them, and I'm going to bring them back here. And then you and I are going to have that future that we've always dreamed of. Well, you better hurry. The sooner you find them, the sooner you and I can get on with our lives. Yeah. Hello, operator. Yeah, can you give me the travel agency, please? Oh, no, I just... 
feel like it's spinning. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, honey. So close can be. I'm burning up. Hmm. The Indians said I had jungle fever. Maybe I'm not over it. Now I gotta stay well. I gotta take care of you. Oh no, don't tell me the phone's dead. Oh no, I gotta get... Oh no, someone, don't tell me I'm here. With Alan, we can't get to a doctor. Oh. oh no, I can't panic. I can't. I gotta take care of Al. Okay, what I have to do... All I have to do here is I just have to not panic. And I have to get... Just walk to a neighbor's house. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Damn. Can't get a flight till I pass for at least another hour yet. You know what's going to happen by the time I get down there? It could be too late. Cord, I know you're worried, but try to remember that the disease is not fatal. Yeah, I know that, Kate. But what if she gets so sick that she just passes out again? She's not going to be able to take care of herself or the baby. Who knows what could happen we there? We don't even know if she's in El Paso. Rafe said the police went over there and, and it didn't look, look like she was Look, I don't care what those cops said or, or over in El Paso. It doesn't make any difference. Tina is down there. I know it, and I'm going to find her. Cord, I am not your enemy or Tina's or the baby's. Kate, I know that. I I'm sorry. Since the minute that Tina showed up, you've been nothing but supportive. It's just that I'm going crazy here with worry. Did you call Dr. Wallach? Can he have the medication ready for you to take down with you? Yeah, yeah, he said he'll have all the pills that I'll need. Okay, you're right. I, I could be going on some kind of a wild goose chase here. If you don't want me to go, you just say the word and I'll stay. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Delilah. No, I, I don't think I could take two surprises in one day. It's too much for me. What? You look fabulous. Are you trading your cowboy image in for a high fashion look now? Well, I love it. I, I do, really, but I love this. In fact, how did you do it? My design's on the cover of Bellissima magazine. I mean, I'm not just going to be known in Landview anymore. Or New York. Or New York. I, I'm going to be known internationally. It looks that way, doesn't it? And I've used both of this. I mean, if you didn't stumble upon your friend Gabrielle's design, my company would just be waiting to happen. It's just the beginning. Once I incorporate my own design, we'll be up there with the finest designers in the world. Max, aren't you just a, a little bit excited? With Tina and her baby missing, all the so-called success in the world couldn't make me happy. I mean, with... I thought after she came back and she told me she's still in love with Court, I could get her out of my mind. And I'm thinking about her all the time. I keep thinking about Tina with malaria and that, that little baby with no one to help him. I gotta take care of you and... Oh, no. Al, I gotta... 
I've got to get to a doctor somehow. Lousy magazine when Tina's done. No, no. It's only natural for you to be happy about your own good fortune. Max, maybe you should take some time off and go help Court find her. Wouldn't help. Working side by side with Court and Mia is impossible. No, Tina and the baby are his responsibility, not mine. If anyone should help, it's the baby's father, not me. So let's get down to business here, all right? Are you sorry you decided to see me today? No. Gabrielle, you, you've hardly touched the wine. If it's too dry, I'll send it back. No, no, the wine is lovely, Rollo. I'm sorry, you must think I'm terribly ungrateful for all the trouble you've gone to. No trouble. I simply wanted to spend the afternoon with the daughter of a very old and much lamented friend. I thought we agreed we weren't going to discuss my father. Gabriel, the last thing I want to do is stir up painful memories, but in the wake of all that's happened, I can't help but be concerned about you and your grandmother. That's very kind of you, but we're managing to get by. The daughter of Dante Medina shouldn't have to get by. With your beauty, with your talents, you should thrive. I'm learning that it takes a lot more than talent and looks to get what you want in this world. Yes. Yes, and now the government is impounding your father's possessions. Gabrielle, please, let me help you find a way to protect them. His properties and his money, they mean nothing to me, especially since they were bought and paid for by his crimes. Well, that's all very noble, but uh, certainly your father must have, have had some mementos, a keepsake perhaps, that rightfully belonged to you and your grandmother. My father never had such mementos for me or my grandmother. And even if he had, I wouldn't want to keep them. All they would do is remind me of a time I'd much rather forget. It's perfectly understandable, but still, Gabrielle, Please, you must... the wine, your company, has all been so delightful. Let's not ruin the afternoon by bringing up the past. As you wish. Well, since you're thinking of nothing but the bright and gleaming future, why don't you tell me what it holds in store for you? I don't know. I feel as though I'm waiting for lightning to strike or some sort of inspiration to hit me, and then I... Gabriel, you were saying waiting for lightning to strike? Sure did, Miss London. Ah, great. Okay. Yep, no surprise here. We move into summer. Drinks keep getting lighter. Let's order some extra cases of the Chardonnay. You got it. Okay. Anything else? Well, up. Uh, no, no, that'll be all. I'll, uh, I'll check with you later, please. Hi, thank you. May I have the usual thing? No, no I've been looking all over the end for oh, you. I took myself shopping. It is the best way in the house to get my trouble. Well, I hate to add to them, but there's something you ought to know. Oh? Can we have a seat? Cindy, what is wrong? You look very serious. Well, Kate called. It seems that Tina has left with the baby, and no one knows where they're gone. Ah, oh, that is so typical. <laughs> She is making one of her usual grandstand plays just to get attention. Now, Kate and Cord don't think it's as simple as that. There's evidence she's gone all the way to El Paso. El Paso? Why? Wasn't well, that where she and Cord just met? Yes. That's Tina, playing on his sympathies by going back to where they first met. Well, I hope that he and Kate are not going to fall for such an obvious ploy. Maria, you don't understand. They can't just look the other way. Cindy. I realize that Cord is concerned about his son, but believe me when I tell you, 
that she is using this baby to get his attention. Right. Now, if he is smart, he will not go along with her. I mean, she's going to get tired of changing diapers, and she'll bring that baby back. And what if she can't? Can't? Why can't she? Maria, Tina has some strain of malaria. If she gets too weak and sick to care for the baby, what then? Malaria? Who said that she is ill? You know, Tina is very capable of faking these kind of things. Uh, uh Dr. Um, Wolick mm -hmm. got the results of the blood test back. That's why Kate wanted me to get in touch with you to let you know the court is leaving for El Paso on the first flight he can get. What? No, court can't. He can't do that. Maria, his baby's life is at stake. What about court's life? What about his life with Kate? Doesn't he realize that she is exploiting that baby? To stop corn. You don't know how much I want to keep you here beside me. But I know you, Cord. And if you don't go look for Tina and your son, you won't be able to stop thinking about it. I've got to go. Right now, you still need you a lot more than I do. Are you sure you're okay with this? Yes, come on. What do you think? I'm some sort of hothouse flower that needs constant attention? You get on that plane to El Paso and don't you worry about me. Oh, you're only asking me to do the impossible there. I think I love you more now than I ever have. But I'm going to find Tina, I'm going to find the baby, I'm going to bring them both back here, and then I'm going to give you all the love and attention that you could stand. Okay, because I lied. I am a bit of a hothouse flower. And when you come back, I want lots of love and lots and lots and lots of attention. Oh, you got that. Mm. Oh, come on in. Cord. Oh, hi, Kate. I got some information I think you can use. I um, talked to the police and the uh, newspaper buddies mine down in El Paso. That's a list of people who can help you when you arrive. Oh, great. Thanks, Clint. This is oh. going to cover a lot of ground. I also stopped by the hospital, picked up the medication with Larry. That ought to save you some time. Thanks, Clint. I guess that's everything. Oh, I need to get a car waiting for me at the, at the airport when uh, I get down to El Paso. I can take care of that. Let me go downstairs and arrange for a rental. Thank you, Kate. Thanks for everything. to be rough on her. Yeah, well, it's rough on all of us right now, Clint. Some way, somehow, I'm going to find my son. I'm glad you feel that way, Cord. I'd hate like the devil for you to have to face the kind of heartache I did. Well, I'll tell you, that's one of the main things driving me right now, Clint. I mean, all those years growing up without knowing that you were my natural father. We both lost out. We both lost out. That's why we got to make sure that same cruel joke isn't played out on you and your son and me and my grandson. I'm glad I did find you when I did, because for that, I consider myself to be one lucky man. Yeah. Listen, don't you uh, worry about anything back here in Landview. And that goes, uh, that goes for Kate, too. I think, you know, I'll do everything we can to let her know she's got our side of the family to count on. Well, thank you, Clint. I tell you, this has been one of the toughest things that I've ever had to deal with. But all the support that you and Vicky have given me, it has well, it's made a hell of a lot easier. Well, I just don't... Uh... <clears throat> well, you know, I mean, I want you to have a chance I never did. Seems like I spent a whole lifetime not even knowing I had a son. You know, it's really incredible, Clint. I mean, I've only seen Al just that once. It's only been a couple days now. And, and it's like I love him, you know? And I've never felt that kind of love before. It's a totally different experience. I know, yeah. There's nothing really quite like it. That's why you got to do whatever it takes to make sure you find your son. And when you do, you keep by your side, you hear? Oh, don't worry about that. I'll find him and I'm going to bring him back here. And maybe in some way that'll help make up for what you and I missed. Don't worry. I'm going out there, and I'm going to bring home the newest member of our family. Women in the workplace. Hmm. That's an important subject, honey. Yes. And my final grade in economics is writing on this paper. Mm -hmm. And I still have to come up with a subject to interview. So you need a real-life success story, huh? <laughs> exactly. 
The most successful woman I know lives just down the path, but I don't think it's a very good time to ask for an interview, do you? You're right, sweetheart. Becky's got enough on her mind these days. What about you? Me? Mm -hmm. Well, I've had my share of success, but I, uh, I don't think I'd, uh, I'd pass the, uh, health exam. 